In this week's Beastline, Vietnam leads green agriculture reform. And later on, international cooperation promotes green agriculture. Hello there, you're tuning into Beastline on VTV International. You're with me, Hoang Hang. Now, sustainable development has become a crucial target for Vietnam's future growth. The foundation for achieving this goal lies in harmonizing economic development with environmental protection. With over 70% of the population involved in agricultural production, the sector is not only strongly impacted by climate change, but also a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. To reduce emissions and contribute to global climate change mitigation, Vietnam's agricultural sector is actively promoting international cooperation and attracting investment to transform production models in line with green growth trends. Along with this, the sector is increasing its share in attracting high-quality foreign direct investment to Vietnam. This topic is also the focus of this week's BizLine. Before we start, join us in the following story. Vietnam is one of the countries most severely affected by climate change. Water shortage risks threaten agricultural production in the southern provinces, the country's food basket. Climate change is a growing issue and agriculture is a major contributor to, uh, to, to, to climate change. So addressing those issues, uh, it's not only a contributor, it's also very susceptible to the impacts of climate change. And if we, um, Take, for instance, look at rice production, which is critically important for the livelihoods of uh, Vietnamese people. Um, um, some estimates indicate that, that rice production could account for up to eight percent of, of global emissions, so of man global man-made emissions. So there, it's very important to be looking at the sorts of technology. According to experts, the greening agriculture sector is an attractive investment opportunity thanks to government support policies and growing demand for environmentally friendly practices. Organic food demand, in particular, is projected to increase by 20% from 2022 to 2028. With rising consumer interest and favorable conditions for sustainable investment, Vietnam offers compelling prospects for foreign investors keen on sustainable agriculture. Vietnam has been an amazing story of development. Uh, not only its economy, uh, its management of uh, Finances generally, it's management of people, it's dragging people out of poverty. I mean, it's improving productivity. It's been a wonderful economic and social story all around. So um, uh, certainly policies that have come through the Vietnam government um, are focused on sustainability. Transforming the production mindset in agriculture is crucial. Vietnam's agricultural sector is shifting from a production-focused approach to an economy-driven model. This new approach emphasizes enhancing value, efficiency, and diversity in value chains to meet market demands. It's the direction Vietnam's agriculture is taking, aiming to accelerate investment and move towards sustainable practices in the face of climate change challenges. To understand the effectiveness of investment models and international cooperation in promoting green agriculture, we have connected with two experts in the field. Please welcome Mr. Evert Wieser, Vice Chairman of the Food, Agri and Aqua Business Sector of the European Chamber of Commerce in Vietnam, or Eurocham, and Ms. Emily Nguyen, Sustainability Manager Asia and Vietnam under the Hearst Corporation. She's also Vice Chairwoman of the Food, Agri and Aqua Business Sector. Welcome to our program. Now, following the principle of strengthening multilateral international cooperation and cross-sector coordination in promoting circular agriculture, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development recently introduced a plan for the development of science and the application and transfer of technology to promote a circular economy in agriculture by 2030. The Prime Minister has also issued Decision 540 to create favourable policies and enhance international cooperation and communication 
about circular agriculture. Now, how do you assess the importance of international cooperation and foreign investment in developing green agricultural model in Vietnam? International cooperation, but also foreign direct investment in Vietnam has been very important for Vietnamese agricultural sector to develop. For international cooperation, for example, the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement has made it easier for Vietnamese companies to export to Europe, but at the same time, of course, also easier for European companies to do business in Vietnam. For foreign direct investment, we see that uh, foreign direct investment in Vietnam, especially when it comes from the EU, usually also comes together with uh, new technologies, uh, best practices, and uh, doing things. Foreign companies uh, from Europe that operate in the agricultural sector also uh, work together with Vietnamese partners uh, to help them increase uh, their uh, way of operating so that they also, for example, more easily can export uh, to Europe or to other foreign markets. We can certainly look at the lesson learned from similar transitions that take place in European com uh, countries, and therefore we do not need to reinvent the wheel all the time. So, for example, in uh, Vietnam's effort to fight antimicrobial resistance in the livestock sector, sector um, especially at the farm level, uh, this has been applied in the Netherlands uh, many years ago, and we can take away uh, some concrete tools to help our farmers use antibiotics in a responsible way while still ensuring their productivity. A major challenge for Vietnamese agricultural enterprises is that the country's top export markets, such as countries in the EU, continuously introduce a new criteria for agricultural products entering the market. In your opinion, what role does international cooperation play in responding to these challenges? For companies uh, in Europe, they have a commitment to help not only themselves, but also partners in their value chain um, to meet these increasing requirements. So I, I do think that um, by making use of these uh, programs or the support of European companies, um, it will really create a win-win situation that help Vietnamese companies meet these increasing standards in a, in a faster and easier way. Here, um, what I noticed um, in um, working with Vietnamese companies is that they often um, forget to look at the complete picture. And so often they see, okay, there is uh, one regulation to meet, and then they meet the regulation. But then uh, typically when they export to Europe, for example, they also need other documents or meet other regulations. And so here also uh, European companies and international cooperation can play an important role. Because, um, like I mentioned earlier, we often see uh, many Vietnamese companies with a high potential. So we also actively help, uh, maybe even if it takes one or two years, uh, to meet the export requirements for, for example, Europe. Besides international cooperation, attracting foreign investment also contributes to promoting the greening of Vietnam's agriculture. Although there have been positive results, FDI attractions into the agricultural sector remains low and has not yet fully realised the potential and strength of agriculture as one of the pillars of the economy. Compared to the industrial and service sectors, FDI in the agriculture and forestry sectors remain slow. This agricultural enterprise has operated in the Vietnamese market since 2014. They identify Vietnam as a market with much potential for investment in the agricultural sector, thanks to its large population, export capacity, and substantial room for high-tech agricultural development. However, the company also acknowledges that there are still some barriers for foreign investors in this sector. So license approvals that currently are uh, relatively challenging of, of land and, and uh, water usage um, is also, uh, can also be exempted. The question only is, okay, how do you, uh, as a foreign company, uh, can make sure that, 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 that you are entitled to those, those rights? Yeah? Uh, and that's, I think there's, there's a lack of, of transparency there. In Vietnam, FDI in the high-tech agriculture sector accounts for a small proportion, only about 18% of the total FDI invested in agriculture and other sectors. 
FDI projects in Vietnam's high-tech agriculture sector mainly focus on basic areas such as vegetable cultivation, flower growing, and agricultural product processing. In fact, one of the challenges of Vietnam is that the average farm is relatively small. We are talking about a two hectare average uh, farm. The race to attract FDI is becoming increasingly fierce, requiring Vietnam to create unique competitive advantages to attract investors to this important sector. By implementing these uh, high-tech solutions and also data and um, artificial intelligence uh, solutions, um, the, 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 the market will change a lot and the, the demand uh, together with the industry and based on that set realistic goals. Vietnam aims to attract 25 billion USD in registered FDI in agriculture by 2030. FDI companies hope that basic bottlenecks will be resolved to confidently invest new capital and expand operations in Vietnam. This will unlock the vast potential of the market and contribute to Vietnam's overall goals. Although agriculture is a pillar of the economy, FDI attraction in agriculture remains lower compared to other economic sectors. Could you explain the reasons for this situation? There has been, I think, a lot of significant improvement in terms of productivity and quality of our products, but it's still a bit behind compared to the other sectors. I think partly one, because many foreign investors in the agriculture industry are specialized in one area of the value chain. And when they are entering a new market, they, are, they need to look for reliable value chain partners to make the total economics of their value chain attractive. So certain capacity might be missing from part of the value chain in Vietnam that has not made this really easy for investors to really confidently invest in the country. Secondly, uh, many agricultural investors also need a large land area. So while industrial investors may receive very good offers from industrial zones, um, the land for agricultural projects are still rather limited in certain areas, in certain provinces, or still very expensive uh, to lease. So this also posed as a barrier. And also another reason is the availability of human resources and talents in the field of agriculture. So um, when FDI um, enter, they are looking for local talents. They are looking for people who are agile in adapting new technology, in um, speaking uh, languages uh, fluently. This makes um, the, uh, the, the need for a workforce for FDI um, a little bit more challenging uh, to look for than in other industries. Mr. Evert, what do you make of this? I also agree with Emily that you can, as you come to Vietnam, and within six months you can have a factory up and running in an industrial zone. But indeed, when you operate a farm, hey, you are looking for a big land area that's um, more and more difficult to, to find. Uh, one other aspect to add, maybe also the access, uh, for example, by road to certain provinces, because there are many provinces in Vietnam which have um, very good potential for development of uh, agricultural projects. Uh, it can be both uh, domestic, but also international. But then, uh, because of the access by road is um, relatively difficult, the transport uh, costs are quite high, and that makes it also maybe less attractive uh, to make the investment. Surveys show that agriculture is a major source of methane emissions, second only to energy sector. Therefore, it is challenging to completely eliminate industries that show signs of pollution uh, when attracting investment. So is this the reason why enterprises are hesitant to invest in agriculture, in your opinion? You plant rice and it will create also uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And so that is a um, part of, uh, of an agricultural process. However, it's of course important to see uh, where uh, these emissions can be reduced. Uh, for example, by applying new technologies um, in, in planting the crops or raising the animals. And so that is one uh, aspect. And secondly, if there is indeed uh, more emissions, then um, uh, should be then of course there are also ways to mitigate this for example by offsetting them 
En zo, voor example, now the Vietnamese government is also working on the domestic carbon market. And so that companies that produce too much greenhouse gas emissions um, have to offset them uh, by, for example, buying them from companies that actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Agriculture is a pillar of Vietnam's economy, with exports valued at 54 billion USD in 2023. However, the sector is also a major source of greenhouse gas emissions, generating about 100 million tons of CO2 equivalent, roughly 30% of Vietnam's total. These emissions primarily stem from rice cultivation, livestock farming, land management, and fertilizer use. After the, um, the energy or the power sector, you know, agriculture is regarded as the next uh, major polluter um, internationally. So, and most of that pollution comes from, if you're talking about livestock, it comes from methane production. To achieve the goal of reducing methane emissions according to international commitments and improving the agricultural environment, Vietnam aims to reduce at least 30% of its total methane emissions compared to 2020 levels by 2030. Various measures have been planned to achieve this goal. Uh, for our pig farms and our breeding farms, we surround them with a, a, what we call a bio barrier, which is trees, many trees that we grow, to sort of, not only that's a good thing, of course, but also to, uh, to have a distance between our farming operation and the uh, environment. With the project, sustainable development of 1 million hectares of high-quality, low-emission rice linked to green growth in the Mekong Delta by 2030. Vietnam has earned international recognition as a leader in the green agricultural revolution. Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities for Vietnam, particularly in producing and exporting low emissions and high-quality rice. And I think through building that strong looking forward, I think that's really going to help Vietnam to uh, increase its... Uh... Green agricultural economics is clearly emerging as a development trend. It offers numerous benefits, addresses social issues, and helps mitigate environmental pollution. Therefore, greening agriculture isn't just a necessary choice, it's an opportunity for Vietnam to become a regional pioneer aligning with global development trends. What solutions are needed to promote the attraction of high-quality FDI into agriculture in Vietnam? Easier access to land eh, or uh, also streamlining the permit process in the provinces where the projects are available. Yeah, of course, also the infrastructure development uh, is still ongoing in Vietnam. It's important so that goods produced can easily be shipped to seaports for export. Perhaps also one important thing to mention, as uh, Emily also highlighted, is um, uh, the training. Because typically also foreign direct investment uh, comes together with high-tech uh, equipment, uh, high-tech uh, production processes. And so that also requires a certain um, skill in the workforce. Foreign uh, invested companies also play a role in this. And so many companies, they also have training programs uh, aimed at um, helping the potential employees of the company uh, to develop their skills. So a sort of, sort of uh, in-house training to make sure that uh, they know how to operate and uh, work in the farms uh, correctly. Um, I think it is also important um, that uh, for the Vietnamese government, uh, they also provide uh, perhaps an um, index of uh, where uh, options or opportunities are for investment in um, agricultural projects. Uh, for example, uh, which, um, which provinces still have sufficient land available for which type of project. And so that also foreign direct investors can use it as a sort of um, map of saying, okay, I want to establish a farm, okay, I could uh, check out this province, or oh, I want to establish a rice mill, okay, it should go to this uh, province, for example. 
Experts suggest that Vietnam's effectiveness in implementing cooperation agreements and promoting investment has positioned it as a regional leader in sustainable agricultural development. So what do you think about this? Vietnam has made great progress when it comes to um, agricultural development uh, it's, and especially a lot of innovation in the field of sustainable development. Um, and there has been key national projects that showcase Vietnam's commitment and position. So one example that I'm very proud about, about, uh, about the Vietnamese government and uh, the uh, industry player is the 1 million hectare rice project, which improved the local farming efficiency while also reducing emissions in the rice farming um, areas. So having similar flagship projects like this can build a lot of trust and confidence in the sector that Vietnam is uh, working on for sustainable agriculture development. The International Finance Corporation, IFC, has granted 52 million USD in funding to this corporation. This investment aims to develop sustainable livestock farming, meet market demands for safe food products with traceable origins, and adhere to global best practices in pig farming. We have a very strong and affordable labour force. We have very good relationships with local government. Um, the national policies are very good and very strong for agriculture, but importantly, so all of those things together and Vietnam's strategic location in Southeast Asia make it a great investment destination, particularly in the agriculture field. Thanks to the influx of FDI investment, livestock farming is growing. This has helped Vietnam's livestock industry gradually align with advanced global farming systems. Additionally, FDI enterprises are introducing new technologies to Vietnam, contributing to the diversification of products especially deep processed products and boosting exports. When we have a large farming operation, 40, 50, 100 hectares, we know the effect that we're having on the environment and we can monitor it. But we also need to engage with the local farmers so that the quality of the product that's coming into Vietnam from both domestic sources and foreign sources is improved across the board. To achieve green growth goals, investment should focus on mobilizing social resources, particularly from businesses. Strengthening international cooperation is crucial for attracting financial support and technology transfer. These efforts aim to transform Vietnam's agriculture into a model of green, low-carbon practices, ensuring food safety and enhancing competitiveness in the global agricultural value chain. As the world strives to mitigate the negative impacts of climate change, sustainable and green investments are gaining importance. How would you assess Vietnam's agricultural sector's shift toward a more environmentally friendly future? Yeah, so I also agree and I see that um, Vietnam also often uh, steals the spotlight in important uh, meetings, uh, for example about uh, climate change. We see that in the last uh, let's say five to ten years, Vietnam has promoted a lot of policies uh, about green growth and also sustainable development in agriculture. And of course, not to forget that uh, in the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement, sustainability and um, the, the taking care of the environment is also an important aspect. And by committing to the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement, the Vietnamese government also gives a strong signal that and we are open for business, but we are only looking for the high quality foreign direct investment that is um, taking care of the environment, uh, bringing also uh, sustainable technologies to our country. And Miss Emily, what other comments do you have for this? You see that um, a lot of agricultural companies or big farms, they, they start to need to report about their carbon emissions. They need to report about um, their uh, business practices and commitment towards sustainability. And this is a very um, huge boost to the industry. This is a motivation to make um, not only the multinational companies or European investors, um, but also Vietnamese companies to 
think about how they can adapt and how they are going to be. I believe that uh, Vietnam is moving in the right track. Um, Vietnam also will need to further promote the national brands of our agricultural producers, um, improving the logistic chain, improving the quality of our talent uh, pool uh, in order to create more affordable and sustainable agricultural products, producers for both the ex export and domestic markets. Once again, thank you to both of our guests for joining us. Thank you very much for uh, the talk today. Thank you so much. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development aims for registered FDI in the agricultural sector to reach 25 billion US dollars by 2030. The focus is on investment projects with high scientific and technological content that are environmentally friendly, as well as sectors where Vietnamese agricultural products have strengths. These include projects that innovate Vietnam's agricultural production mindset shifting from traditional farming to an agricultural economy that emphasizes value, efficiency and diversification along market-driven value chains. At the same time, the focus will also be on transitioning from developing single industry to integrating multiple industries and from a single value approach to one that incorporates multiple values. These strategies represent Vietnam's agricultural direction aim at accelerating investment attraction and moving towards sustainable agriculture in the face of climate change challenges. And on that note, we wrap up this edition of BizLine. Stay with us for more content or you can always visit our website at youtube.com slash VTV4Go. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.